So now I'm creating um, a new layer, just eyes shadow, and I'm using this to sample dark and just paint a darker ring uh, around the actual eye itself. I'm again, going to control click on the iris ba on the eye base, so I'm selecting just the eye pixels, and again, you're not seeing the marching ants because I used control H to hide that selection, and this just lets me paint a shadow where the eyelids are meeting the eye, and it just anchors those together more. If we don't have a shadow there, it doesn't feel like they're making contact, and it doesn't really set the eyes in the head. So that's the whole purpose of that step there, is to just add that little extra bit of shadow to set the eyes in there. So I'm going to do a new layer called Nose Eyes Model, Motel, and this is just a mottling pass. It's squiggling. I'm sampling this purple color that I used on the gums here. I've just gone down and changed that to a normal layer blending mode just so I could sample the color accurately. And I've created this new layer and setting it to an overlay blending mode. And I'm just using my brush and making squiggle lines. And that's what mottling is. It's just squiggling lines. Sometimes people call it a noodling pass or a figure eight pass. And the best way I can describe it is just imagine you're squiggling all sorts of little veins in the skin. The purpose of this is to break up the skin, um, create variation in color temperature and value, and it helps just create a sense of translucency. It feels like there is blood and you know, uh, tissue there. It feels like something's happening in the skin. It's not just painted this you know, flat matte color. Um, anytime we're painting prosthetics or props or animatronics, physical objects with an airbrush, we're using this technique of squiggling and mottling color on because you've just got opaque foam latex or opaque silicon most of the time. You'll have a, a semi-translucent silicon and you're going to be squiggling color into it just to add that sense of depth. And the same thing is true here in a 2D painting in Photoshop on top of a ZBrush model. You see this, I just squiggle this in and as these layers are built up, you know, I'll do various hues of purple and red, and then also splotch in yellows on top as well. So I'm just going to speed the video up here, and you'll see um, you'll see these squiggles start to happen faster. So here you can see these squiggles around the mouth, up to the cheek area, and into the brow. And again, it's just I'm just globally squiggling all over the face, just trying to break things up. I'm not being too precious about it. I'm not being too, um, you know, I'm not overthinking it. Uh, here I've duplicated the layer, and by duplicating it, uh, it actually increases the effect of the model just a little bit more. So that allows me to punch that, that effect up. And then you can erase out the areas that you want to be softer. So you'll be doubling up the effect uh, anywhere where you're not erasing. And if you've erased out uh, the duplicate layer, it's going to be lighter in those areas. Here you can see me um, erasing out a bit. And then punching up some more purples around the nostrils. Generally, I put lots of reds and purples around the wings and the nostrils. Anywhere where there's mucous membranes, I like to make those feel a little bit reddish. You'll notice over on the right side, I've actually just painted a very opaque swatch of my color, and that just allows me to, to sample it more easily. You know, if I, if I come back to this layer later and I want to get that exact hue of purple, I can very easily select it. making some broader, bolder squiggles as we get further away from the center of the face. It doesn't have to be really tightly patterned all over the painting. You can spread that patterning out and make it you know, quite a bit um, uh, broader. Here I've got a layer of yellow. So you'll see that we've actually created a mottled yellow layer here. And what I'm doing is I'm just painting in layers of yellow. You see the, that layer turning on and off there. I'm just grouping those together into a model layer group. And there's the yellow that I selected there. And that yellow, again, I'm just, you see me just painting that down in sort of a splotchy pattern. I always try and name my layers descriptively as much as possible. It just makes life so much easier when you come back to the project later. I find that 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 yellow that I put down is really important. Um, and if you look at the layered PSD file that I'm, I'm making available with this tutorial and turn that on and off, you'll see what it does. It sort of creates that top layer of translucency to the skin. 
Uh, here I'm just smearing some purple down around the lips, and I'll switch that to an overlay blending mode, just to create a sense of there being gunk or blood or bile coming out of this thing's mouth. I just want those lips to feel darker. I don't want them to feel like he's wearing lipstick. Uh, maybe um, there's like crusty blood or leftover victim on his mouth or something. So I'm pushing that towards, you know, real dark reds, violets. Uh, but again, back onto that yellow. If you turn that layer on and off, you'll see just how important that is when we're putting that down on top of all the squiggles. It sort of helps push everything back and it gives it a sense of there being a top layer, sort of translucent skin. And it's not an opaque la yellow layer. It is just splotches put down um, in bigger, broader, squiggly patterns, just like the really fine purple ones. It's just with a much bigger brush. Zooming in here, you can see the interplay between those purples and those yellows really clearly. So I'm selecting my top layer here and using the hotkey Control alt shift e to collapse everything down into a single layer. And that retains my previous layers, it's just collapsing everything on top into a new layer. Uh, before you do that, you want to turn off any sort of background or atmosphere layer so it's just the head layers that are actually being collapsed. And now I'm using the dodge and burn tool to punch in shadow and highlight. This is very simple. I just turn down the opacity on the brush, the exposure of the brush, and I'm punching in the darks here, as you can see, and I'm punching in the brow lines, and just trying to model in a bit more form, uh, just adding highlight and shadow. Don't overdo this. Be real careful because it can become very theatrical if you punch those shadows in too hard, but it can be really, really nice to come in here and just pick out highlight. You know, just that little bit there kind of starts to create the sense of a specular sheen running across the lip. Entirely done with the dodge and burn. And again, because we, we're doing this on a collapsed version of our layer, we can turn it on and off or erase out uh, by degrees. If we feel like it's too strong, you can you know, hit it with a 40% eraser brush or erase it entirely. You know, you're not married to any of this because it's happening on a second, separate layer.